Hi, I'm Corey Butler. And I'm Sean Todd. And this is the Mind and Money Show, powered by Acevda Financial. On our show, we'll be going into a deep dive into the relationship we have with our minds, health, and our money. If you'd like to join us on our journey towards becoming better humans, stick around. Sometimes you may catch yourself thinking about an idea for a business and just wonder, could I do that? That quick thought might quickly be dismissed by a variety of other ideas or distractions. But what if you took that chance and went with your idea and allowed it to evolve and grow? Our journey today takes us on a road diving into the challenges, values, and goals of a successful family business in the financial planning, wealth, and insurance areas, what it started like, what it feels like, the incredible changes in the way we do business, Welcome to the show. I'd like to introduce our guests today. We have Brian Adams and Doreen Todd, both owners of Acevda Financial Planning Boutique located here in Ottawa. Brian Adams started his career 47 years ago in the insurance business with London Life and worked both as a manager and as an advisor in the Toronto and Ottawa areas. His practice now serves hundreds of professionals, business owners in the Ottawa and outlying areas. He has been recognized for his efforts at a variety of levels, speaking to groups across the country, and most recently has had a local Ottawa area annual award named after him in his honor. There aren't too many people in Ottawa or Toronto who have met, heard, or talked to Brian. Doreen Todd also started with London Life in 1985 as an insurance advisor in the Perth area, notably building her business quickly and became a quick study and successful advisor to her clients across the Ottawa Valley. Brian and Doreen started Acevda along with their son, Sean, in 2007 and have experienced all the trimmings of family business growth pains from startup to transition planning. It's been a journey and we welcome them here today to talk about their experience on the show. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Well, this is a great opportunity. So for those who may or not may not understand, Brian is my stepfather and Doreen is my mother. So I think we're going to have a great opportunity to speak to them about their past. And they are now my work parents. Uh, work, work parents. <laughs> That's right. I think you, you became it. the favorite. Actually. <laughs> well, it's week to week, right? I think it's like normal family life. Sometimes you're the golden goose. Sometimes you're. You've got gosh. a nicer office. You've got yeah. the, the light. My mom got you the light. I don't the even light have a light. was significant. <laughs> Stop it, boys. <laughs> Basically, we keep the two of them on the straight and narrow. <laughs> well, somebody has to. And so we thought for, for the listeners that we wanted to really, you know, show how everything came to be. People are, where did we come from? How did we become a Sivda? Um, who are the people involved? And so this is what we're doing today. I'd love to kind of talk to you a little bit. Uh, I think we'll maybe just, we'll go back to you, Brian, first and just kind of talk Let's talk about you uh, and, and where you're at in your life, leaving university, uh, starting in a career, and how you chose this area of business, and then what attracted you? Maybe a little bit about that f to begin with. Well, when I left university, I decided I didn't want to do something, get involved in a career right away. So as a result, I uh, was a professional bartender at a private club in Toronto for a couple of years. And uh, it gave me the opportunity to meet some very influential people in Toronto, uh, people who own businesses, people involved in the radio, press, and TV industry. And uh, one of them approached me one day and said, hey, kid, you know, um, you've got more smarts than just doing this. Uh, why don't you come and work in this industry? And uh, I immediately said, oh, my God, no, that's the last thing I'd want to do, you know, sell insurance. And he said, well, you know, come and talk to us. And I said, no, 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 not interested. And then he kept coming back and saying, you know, I really think you should think about this. And so finally I went in and met with some people, did uh, psychological testing and all that stuff. And they said, yeah, we, we think you'd be good in the business. You know, you're good with people and talking to them, and uh, we, we'd like to hire you. So I said, okay. And uh, 
So that started my journey with London Life, and uh, I worked in uh, a Scarborough office for about 12 years, 12 and a half years. Uh, the last two, I was uh, uh, in management, and uh, then I had uh, an opportunity as a manager to uh, go down to London and to teach at the school there for new representatives that were coming in the industry. And that's when uh, I met the love of my life. And Can I just back up for a moment, Brian? Didn't they actually make a... Um an advertising folder uh, based on what you said, who not, no, not me. Yeah. Yeah. They, they actually did. They came up with a brochure and the brochure was basically, as Dreen says, that it was like, uh, like I said, oh my God, that's not what I would want to do ever. And they took that idea and they fashioned in, into a brochure to attract people to the business because they felt if, other people looked at it and said, yeah, that's the way I feel. Maybe they'd, after they read it, they'd say, oh, well, maybe it is for and me. And the tagline was, who, me? Yeah. Or some comment that's like right. that. Yeah. yeah. And we, we have still a have not seen the results of that psychological test. No, we have not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. I, I, I actually have a tape. Yeah. I have a little <laughs> VCR tape. <laughs> that's not funny. Yeah. So then... A when lot of I, questions unanswered. <laughs> when I met Dream, still to this day, then uh, so I decided uh, I wanted to move to the Ottawa area, and there were no management positions available here for me. So I convinced my uh, boss at the time to send me here on an assignment. So I came down here and I worked with a new advisor, covert assignment, and. Oh. and uh, <laughs> For a couple of weeks, and we did an amazing job. The regional manager was thrilled to death, but um, there still were no management positions, and so as a result, I had to revert and become an advisor again. And uh, so, I, it ended up by uh, moving to Toronto, a city I'd never lived in, uh, starting over from scratch because at that time you couldn't. Uh, take your book of business with you. So I had to leave 12 years of business in Toronto, those clients, and I had to start over again. And uh, I uh, also had uh, two stepchildren who were just on on the edge of uh, becoming teenagers. I noticed your face is starting to turn different colors right now. (laughs) And all that fun that that uh, brings. But uh, And I was studying for my CLU uh, at that time, uh, mornings before I went to work, and uh, we were living in Perth, so it was an hour's travel to get to where I worked. So it was challenging, but uh, I, I always tell people that I probably will live longer as a result of moving to Ottawa. Nothing against Toronto. I, lots of things I miss about Toronto— but I don't miss the traffic. I don't miss the craziness of the business there. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, the Ottawa market is a lot more laid back. It's a lot uh, calmer. And as a result, I've probably put 10 years on my life. And, and thank you, Brian, for sharing that story. I, I kind of want to jump back to that in a second. I'm going to ask yeah. you some more about your past because I feel no like worries. we just— we just went through that so fast, and, there's, and I feel like it's like a like a war vet. You have there's so many other stories there. I want to I want to get to sure. But uh, mom, for you, um, how did you make that jump? Because it's uh, you know we just talked a little bit about Brian making that that leap start. of faith. That's it. Yeah, sure. Story's but finished. What, what drew you to this business? This uh, would have been very intimidating, I'm sure, at times. If we go back to 1985, and I'm thinking about. Um, the workforce and then uh, the, some of the barricades, not the natural barricades that were present uh, for a young woman professional. So what what made you attracted to this area? And then tell us a little bit how you started. Okay. So I, in order to get to 85, I have to go back to 65. In 1965, I followed my sister to Ottawa. It was either going to Ottawa or going to Toronto. Toronto, I'm a country girl. So Toronto was overwhelming for me. And my sister had come to Ottawa the year prior to me. So um, 
I came to Ottawa in 65 and linked up with my first, very first job was with London Life. I was then a secretary straight out of high school. And so I worked right up until I had my first child, which was Sean, uh, and up until 1971. And then uh, just prior to having Sean, I quit uh, London Life to have my start my family. And then I, uh, my, my first husband followed me up. So we started our, and uh, we married in 68. We had our family. And then in, in 71, I stopped working at uh, London Life. And then, um, and then I never worked again and, until, uh, until our, our family was in school. And then um, in 1982, I found I was a single parent, and I'm, I'm now a secretary. I couldn't then, on a secretary's wage, be a single parent. So I called somebody I had, uh, had contact with, I had worked for at, uh, at London Life in downtown Ottawa, on Albert Street, oddly enough. And so I, uh, I said, I'm a single parent. Um, I'm not sure what I should do to increase my income. And he said, uh, why don't you become a uh, London Life advisor? And I said exactly what Brian said, who me? And uh, so anyway, I investigated it, did all, everything Brian did, took the psychological test, of which I've also buried that <laughs> as well. And uh, got, rid of that file. Yeah. got yep. my yeah. licensing and uh, went to head office in 1985. And uh, that's how I met uh, this wild and woolly, woolly guy I'm sitting wow. beside. Wow. So, so it was destiny. I was to go to head office in uh, February of 85. Brian was also to go to head office in February of 85. Both of our schedules had changed, and, and we ended up going to head office in April of that same year. And so we figure it was destiny. Wow, that's neat. To meet. And April is my birthday, and this was my present. Oh, no, no. Wow. That's a little tacky. <laughs> wow. No, no. Too tacky. No. Let's talk for just a couple of, uh, like a minute or so on so many people have a fear of taking that first step, giving up that salary, giving up that T Ford income that you receive from an employer. Can we kind of talk about just quickly what that felt like for either one of you to step out of that that sure paycheck that to to go out there into the unknown. Corey, I had no paycheck to give up. I was just going to better. I was going to worse. Give me a dollar. I need. I was upgrading. Uh, I need. Groceries. There was no fear. Yes. Yeah. yes I yeah. was leaving fear. <laughs> so Take it, Brian. <laughs> for me, it was more of the challenge. I had a regional manager who was all about challenge. He would say, do whatever to challenge the heck out of you. And you were damned if you were going to let him win. You were going to be the one who won. And so it was really just dogged determination. When I was in management, I was also always very, very careful to say to people who are considering coming in the industry that, you know, it's not for everyone. It's a very tough industry, and there's more failures than successes, and you need to understand that. And if you want to come in and if you make up your mind that you want to come in that industry, you're going to have to really work hard to make a success of it. So it's, you know, it's... um, it's a very unique industry. You're, you're selling an intangible. You know, it's not like a new car where you can feel it and smell it and sit in it and drive it. It doesn't work like that. It's something that's going to happen years in the future. And it's something that they, they tend to look at as a little um, fuzzy. You know, they, it's not really the rate happening now in front of them. So it's harder for them to visualize sometimes for some people. So it makes it a tougher uh, product. And then how true is it? Like you you hear uh, uh, speakers like Tony Robbins say things like, 
Uh, you have to burn burn the boats. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna you know kind of sail to that island, you're gonna once you get there, you burn your boats. You don't have any way back. You're gonna have success. So, how true do you think that is with it being determined and having a vision going into that kind of industry or career? It was very true for me. I remember when I was hired by London. Uh, I remember saying to them, I'll give you two years. I said, regardless of how it uh, unfolds, I will guarantee you two years of my life, and then we'll see. But I'll guarantee you the two years. I'm not going to just you know, go into it for a few months and then say, oh, no, it's no good. It's not for me. I said, I'll give you two years. And uh, as it turned out, it was a very successful two years, uh, with a few bumps in the road, mind you, but uh, a very successful two years. And uh, so I, as a result, I decided to stay. And here I am 47 years later. Not enjoying it at all. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and what did it provide you? So obviously, Mom, for yourself, Corey had asked about uh, how difficult it was to make that transition for the pay. And clearly for you, it was just the opportunity to, to have more independence. But... As that started to kind of percolate, as you started seeing more of that, what was it doing for you personally, maybe confidence-wise, uh, for your own lifestyle and your own health? What improvements did you start to see as you started to have more success? Oh, it gave me my life. It, it was everything. I don't want to get too emotional, but it, it, oh. was, it, it was everything. I was a single parent. It, it enabled me to be... Um, to be uh, a provider for my children. It was, um, it was, I was able to make a livelihood for my children and um, be independent. Independence was absolutely everything to me. I, uh, I could pay my own mortgage. I could buy a car. I could provide, um, I could provide for my children. And that's, you're right on. And I, I think there's people that are going to listen to this and say, that's me. That, that's me. I'm, I'm either on one side of that fence or the other. So if you have a single mom listening to this right now and they say they're identifying, they say, hey, you know what? I'm, I don't have a, a goal or a vision, but I'm, I'm resonating with this. How much would you encourage them to say this is a great career to become independent? Oh, my goodness. I, if I could live my life again, I, I love, love this career. This career offered everything for me. Uh, the flexibility because I had joint um, um, custody with my uh, my ex. It, it was um, we were one of the first people to have joint custody. I might add, way back, and uh, it worked out wonderfully. So when I didn't have, I, I'm a workaholic. So when I didn't have my children, I had a career that I could throw myself into. So I, I took a bit of the sting away. And uh, and then I could flex around when I did have my my children, and it was uh, it was it was a perfect career. And then I sadly two and a half years into it, had to go off on disability because I had um, uh, uh, something I couldn't health, health issue. a health issue yeah, that I yeah. couldn't uh, step over. But I uh, I did extremely well in it, and I was very proud of my accomplishment, and. Um, so I uh, no, I have nothing but praise. I loved pe- uh, the, meeting the people. I loved. I believed in in uh, the product to the moon and back. And um, I um, no, I have nothing but um, but uh, raves about this career. And I was sadly uh, taken from it way too soon. But uh, anyway, I um, was able to assist a bit with Sean and Brian's. Uh, uh, Asivda, and I'm very proud of what I'm able to help with there. So, um, no, I, I would encourage any single parent, a uh, single woman, single man, whatever, um, or otherwise, to uh, to step out there, uh, go for it, and um, you will do very well. It just takes um, uh, education um, and. Um, determination and a love of people I think goes um, a long way and belief in the product and just educate yourself about the product you will do wonderful 
Amazing. Amazing. I, I kind of want to understand as well, Brian, if I look and I listen to you uh, talking about those early years. Yeah. And I think when people, I think insurance, especially because it starts off London Life, we have uh, London Life and of course, the development of the insurance companies, uh, you know, 140 years ago. But um, how, how difficult was it? I mean, the industry has changed so much. But tell us a little bit about, you know, was, was it really... Did the insurance guy have to wear the hat, walk on the street with the briefcase? And was, was it that, was it like that? And then just tell us a little bit about what was the industry like then? Pretty much. It was, uh, it was very, very different than today. Uh, and that was, if there was anything I disliked about the business, it was the premise of the business back then as opposed to today. You know, today it's about financial planning. And it's, uh, it's with regards to, you know, uh, looking at goals, looking at what, you know, helping clients to achieve their goals. Back then, it was, it was all about uh, providing a product. It was product generated. And the industry was really different. I mean, we were literally going door to door. Um, we were collecting premiums at the door. In cash, which was really made you uncomfortable, particularly when you would go to some little old lady's home and she would say, oh, well, I, I can't be there. If I'm not home, the door will be open. Just go in and the money will be sitting on the kitchen table. Wow. Incredible. And wow. you'd be, you know, like. We would uh, do that all the time. Go to and jail for that now. Yeah, you'd exactly. Walk in yeah. Someone's People are home. serving time. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then the biggest fear was that there was going to be some monster dog come out of the bedroom and <laughs> bite your leg off too. But no, it was a very different business. And uh, uh, there was. Way back when, every Friday you had to report. So on the Friday morning, you had to go into your regional office and you had to say, okay, what business do you have for the week? You know, and to stand up there and say nothing was pretty uh, humbling and embarrassing. So you wanted to make sure you... Had, and that was part of the challenge. So there was a little bit of shaming involved. Oh yeah, oh there was Pretty a lot, much. and it was very, it was very yeah. business like um, roll call oriented, like yeah, detail like that sort of shaming oriented, and it was terrible back Did then. Anyone have Sales, a bell? Anyone have a bell? And it's like no, shame, shame. Sales <laughs> oriented back then. It was it was terrible um, back. And you back to, then we should stop saying back then, but it was very. Yeah. And you had to balance your books, so you know those collections you had to make. You had to balance your books. And at the end of the week, there were some offices that if you hadn't balanced your books, you didn't get paid because you were getting a paper check back then. And so the regional managers say, are your books balanced? Oh, well, I'll hold on to this until your books are balanced. It was crazy. Very different world than what it is today. And, uh, you know, I was just so more pleased when the mindset of the industry changed and it was more about uh, planning and more about uh, doing the right thing for the client as, as opposed, opposed to, to sales. product yes. orientated. Yeah, totally. totally. I think you brought the dog up, Brian, and I know Ben's giving me like the evil eye here. And I think there's a dog story <laughs> there is a dog that we want to jump in on and I'd love to hear that's this. your mother's story. Oh. Yeah, the, 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 let's, let it out. Uh, let's, uh, we, we can't hide. We just open uh, the vault. Yeah. Oh. Let's talk about the dog. Yep. Yeah. Please. Really? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Is it? Uh, yeah. No, well, no. Let it out. Okay. Is it PG? Is it a PG? No, show? no. This <laughs> is well R-rated some days. So. Well, <laughs> let me just preface it by saying that when you went in someone's home, either to collect a premium or to talk to them about insurance, it was, you know. You didn't know what you you were coming into in terms of the environment, in terms of were they smokers, non-smokers, was there animals, was there children? It it sometimes it got a little crazy. You'd walk in there and you know there was four or five kids and there was two dogs and there yeah. were you know both of them smoked and it was like pandemonium. And you know, if you don't close the sale and you go back to the office, you're going to be shamed. Friday, yeah, so there's Friday like morning. Very, yeah. Yeah, yeah, shame, shame. Yeah. Yeah. So this, it's very intense. I have to close this. Exactly. Or, or my name's Mud. So here is Dream well, you've sitting told at the, the story. table. I don't need yeah. to. <laughs> well, 
Okay, so I have mentioned I'm a single parent. All right, so I haven't had a sale for two weeks, and I've got, I have to go back to an, my, my head office on Friday. This is probably a Thursday night appointment at 7 o'clock, and I know Friday morning is coming in less than 24 hours, and I'm out in the boonies for this appointment. And I, I'm a very meticulous dresser, so... I've bought a new pair of shoes in hopes that it'll be good luck. Shoes I probably, no doubt, could not afford. I've got my nice new suit on. And I'm dressed to the nines out for this appointment, sitting at the kitchen table, ready to fill out this application. And I am filling it out, the kitchen table, amidst the screams of the kids, and underneath this table, peeing on my left shoe <laughs> is this tiny little dog as I'm filling out this application. <laughs> but I didn't say a word because I needed this application and I was afraid. Keep on writing. Keep on writing. Keep on writing. Fill out this application and get the heck out of this house. As soon as I left the door, I wanted to immediately take off my shoe, find the nearest shower. <laughs> but these shoes, all I could think of was, I think I paid $85 back then. Wow, which was a lot of these, money. Which is a lot yeah. of money for yeah. me who did not yeah. have the money when I have two kids and I hadn't had any paycheck for a while. Anyway, wow. uh, this dog really ruined this. Well, I thought in my mind, ruined these sh- beautiful shoes. But you got the sale. But yeah. I did get the sale and That's I had right. it on the board the next morning. Yeah. For nine o'clock. So and they called the name. <laughs> yeah. and they, yeah. Dream Todd. Yeah, got one. Got one. Yeah. <laughs> one shoe in the air. Yeah. One shoe, one shoe. It definitely blew my mind. When, so yesterday I sat down with Doreen and Brian to talk about uh, their past and how they got to where they were and the fact that they had to go to people's houses to collect the money and deal with screaming kids and stuff like that, that gave me a whole appreciation for what they've done and how they've developed it and what's happening now bringing people to the office. It's it's wild. I think they probably saw my jaw hit the ground when they were telling me stories oh, yesterday. We did. But we, uh, the, the favorite, believe it or not, my favorite part of the job was what they called cold door knocking. And I loved it, and I could still do it today. I know you don't do that sort of stuff, but I love meeting people. And I would literally go out and just knock on the door and say, Hello, my name's Doreen Todd. I work with, I'm your London Life representative. I love doing that. And they'd either say, No, I'm sorry, I'm not interested. Or they'd say, Come on in, because Perth is a beautiful town. And I had Perth and Lanark, and um, people are very gracious. <laughs> I am not afraid of anybody. I don't care if you're the president of whoever or you're whoever, whoever. I just love people. And that, to me, was the absolute best part of my job without, hands down, was cold door knocking. Loved it. So there's, there's going to be managers that are listening to this that are go, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Or Well, I, I didn't so much like going through the phone book, but just... Face to face, cold door knocking, hands down, favorite part of my job. So there's another aspect of the business that was there that we haven't talked about, and that's technology, or rather mm. the lack of it. So understand in the seventies and for most of the eighties, no cell phones, no computers. So when you went in, sat down with a client, so you're meeting with the client. And you're saying, okay, how much would you like to set aside for this insurance? And they say, I'm not sure. And you say, okay, well, what about $50 a month? Mm, Okay, that that might work. (laughs) And then you bring out the rate book. And you look up male or female, what their age is, and you get a figure. And then you get a piece of full scap, and you start doing multiplication and addition and and division longhand and figure it out. And then you get that done, and then the client says, well, you know, maybe $35 would be work better. So now it's multiplication, addition, and uh, division longhand. Again. Again. (laughs) And then 
<laughs> you get done that, and then they say, well, when I get to be 65, how much money will I have? Get the rate book out again. Mail, <laughs> age, 65, calculate the dividends, calculate the cash value. It, you know, it was, I remember one of the advisors I worked with, who was very successful, walked in one day to the bullpen and he said, uh, hey guys, have a look at this. And it was as big as your hand. And he said, I, we said, oh, what's that? He said, it's something called a calculator, not a computer, a calculator. We said, oh, well, what does that do? And he said, well, you can multiply and divide, add and subtract just by pushing a button. And we thought, oh, my goodness, this is amazing. This is going to save us so much time. And, you know, it was mind-boggling when you tell people today who are in the industry what you had to go through back then and what it was like. And then, you know, cell phones. I remember when I worked in Toronto, I would be on the Don Valley Parkway and there'd be an accident or whatever up ahead and it'd be, become the parking lot, you know, and you had an appointment downtown. Well, there was no way to get a hold of that client. You couldn't just pick up a cell phone and say, hey, I'm going to be a little bit late. Didn't exist. Right. It was a different world. And it wasn't until really, I think, 80s, late 80s, that computers started very slowly to come into the industry. But, you know, what a different world it is today. And do you think, in terms of you guys have experienced zero technology to now, you know, it's all the way at the other end of the spectrum. Yeah. Do you think it's made life easier? It's made life easier oh, in many respects, so. but it's also made you more accountable. Uh, you know, I think people work more. They, they're, they're putting more hours in. I think they're more uh, accessible than they were before. I mean, it used to be when you, you didn't have a cell phone, you know, client couldn't call you. Your boss couldn't call you. There was, you know, you, you had that time off. Now you're always on. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to get a text. You're going to get an email. You're going to get a phone call. You're always accessible. And that's not a bad thing in some respects because, you know, there are situations that have to be dealt with right away. And I understand that. But it just makes it so that you're, you're basically always working. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. what you have to do is you have to learn to, when you go home, turn off the key, turn off the business, and leave some time for yourself. Because if you don't leave some time for yourself, you're going to burn out. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't know how I've lasted 47 years. And I think part of it was at some point I started to understand that I had to leave time for me. And I had to turn it off. Because otherwise, it's very easy to burn out in this industry. I can't even imagine being able to go to work in the morning and having one task and then not having a million interruptions. Yeah. Like people say, well, I'm going to get this done today yeah. and not getting 45 emails. That would be mm -hmm. a different yeah. world. But, yeah, they had, but then you yeah, had a trade off because you don't have a calculator. So it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's different for Brian and I because because we work together and then yeah. we come home together. Yeah. Yeah. So literally when Brian, uh, because now he's shortened his week, or we have shortened our week. So literally when Brian leaves that office, we do not talk business. Once we leave yeah. Hearst Way, our, our business stops. We do not talk. You guys have done a very good job with life balance for sure. It's, yeah, we uh, I commend you on both of that because it's, you know, uh, you're obviously at different stages of, uh, in terms of career, but I, I definitely, you know, it's something I look forward to achieving in my own life. Thank you. I would talk business because I don't know when to talk, turn it off, but Brian is better. Oh, he, he is burly, brisk. I'm adamant that he is adamant. He will mm -hmm. not discuss anything. Yeah. And I'll mm -hmm. just say one more question. No, no, he will not. I'm the same way. No. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's yeah, a bloodline right. thing, Sean. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's talk about 
working in a family business um, and some, and it doesn't really matter, you know, industry, but I think in terms of, you know, being in a close knit environment with family members and the, you know, the, the, the good and the bad. Yeah, it certainly is a different mindset. It's a, it has its own challenges. We have clients who are family businesses as well, and, and I'm sure they would say the same thing. So you're right. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. It's, uh, it, it is a different um, way of doing business. So, you know, there there's always going to be, in some ways, it's an enhancement because you know the person you're working with, it, you can trust them implicitly because they're family, okay? They're blood. And it's, uh, but it also means that there's going to be things that they're going to say that a stranger wouldn't say because you're family. So they're going to say something that might be a little more brutal than somebody else would say to you. But on the other hand, what we've always done... Are we talking about mom there? Or? <laughs> so you're talking about me. <laughs> Can't be talking about the stupid stepson. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, harsh. <laughs> well, it's for the listeners, it's an ongoing joke. Yeah, well, <laughs> so, you know, yeah. I think what it is, is what we learned, and it was a learning process when we first started working together, is that you have to, you say, you may disagree, but then you let it go and forget about it. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's easier for family to do. Right. You know, if two employees at a corporation have a, a you know, a fight, a disagreement, whatever, they're more likely to let it faster. Whereas for us, we were very, got very good at letting it go. Mm -hmm. And the next, you know, day, whatever, it was just, okay, we got to go on with the business. Back to work. Back to work. I don't even want to pretend it didn't happen because it happened, right? I oh, mean, I'm, oh, I'm sure. looking just for you and I, I just obviously to clarify it yeah. for you and I. Yeah. There was times when I could, when we were newer at that relationship yeah. and yeah. then something is said, something's done and we're both in a place where we're not feeling great. And yep. then I can remember there's been times where I've, I basically had to pack up my stuff and, and leave. leave and go home for the day or yep. work out of the office. Cause I just thought, okay, I'm, I and can't likewise. be here right now in, in both ways. Be a homicide. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but then but I it, find, I think you, we find ways yeah. to get better True. at uh, either noticing the sensitivities or working out through the problems. And that seems to happen better now than it did 10, let's say 10 years ago. Well, and, and I had a little bit of prep for that. In so far as when I moved here in 85, I had two stepchildren, and I'd never had children in my life. I'd certainly never had stepchildren. And so this was a whole new world for me, and I had to learn to be able to interact with them. Uh, I wasn't their father, and I wasn't going to be there, didn't want to be their father. So we had to learn how to interact together and how to become friends. And then when we went into business together, it was sort of the same thing all over again, only it was how to work together as business partners. So, you know, it, it just takes a little bit of time and it takes a little bit of effort on both parts to make it work. And, and that's what we did in both occasions. We knew we were in, we, we, we both knew that there was a problem when mom would have the meeting and bring us into the boardroom. <laughs> so when we board knew meeting, we were in trouble. board yeah. meeting, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when mom would, <laughs> when mom would bring us both in, yeah. So that was it. It just got real. Yeah. Well, because it's awkward for me because I'm going home with one partner, and then the other partner is my son. So I'm always walking on eggshells. Yeah. So I can't take sides. I have to be the mediator. Yeah. Well, so. very inspiring, too, because I think there was times, and if I look back, you know, I want to kind of, of move to that conversation, too, is just about the growth of the business, but early on, and when, when it was tighter, and it was like we're straining, and there's a bit of a pain point because we're uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. There was times you'd be like, listen, fellas, I'm not sure what your week looks like. <laughs> 
but it better this have is some what I need. more appointments in it. We need more appointments. Start grinding. Get going. Yeah. Start. You've got phones. You've got texting. Get going. And I just felt like that was pretty inspiring. I mean, I always knew that was, it kind of puts that fire under you for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, like any business, you know, in the first, they say, five years, any business struggles. I mean, it's it's the unusual, it's the exception where you have a business and it just takes off like a rocket. Most businesses, the first few years, they struggle, you know, because they're they're trying to find their way, they're building their clientele, they're whatever. And as a result, you know, financially, it, it takes a toll. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you have to dig into your pocket and sometimes you have to uh, borrow or whatever it takes to keep it going. And you ha- again, just like you were talking about, about coming in the industry, you have to have faith. You have to have faith that it's going to work and you're going to succeed. But, you know, there were times when we were eating uh, hot dogs and beans and uh, Not so much rice week. A lot of, it was definitely yeah. a rice week. Yeah, a lot of hamburgers. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, uh, you know, it's all worked itself out over the years. And, and, and how did you kind of keep on, like, as far as just reassuring yourself? Like, what, what did you both do to reassure that if we went back to kind of day one of the business starting and those, during those hard times, when, when you looked out the window, how did, you, how did you reassure yourself that you're doing the right things? Well, I think it was the fact that in this industry, you control what your success is going to be. So I remember coming in the business, they told me two things. They said, you got to spend money to make money. And they said, if you want to succeed in the business, you're really, your only impediment is you. Because you determine how successful you're going to be. If you want to light the world on fire and work seven days a week, fill your boots. You can do that. You're in control. You are also your own boss. So if you decide you want to take a day off, you can take a day off, you know, but you just know you have to pay the bills. You know, you have to do this. But, you know, sometimes um, you would uh, lag behind or whatever, and then you'd say, I got to get my act together. And uh, I'm going to come in on the weekends and I'm going to make calls like Dream was saying earlier. And I'm going to contact some people and get some appointments and uh, make this happen. But you were in control of that. You, you know, you were the one who determined how much you worked, how hard you worked, whatever. But you had control to be able to do that. So you were in control of your own destiny. And it, Conversely, if, and this is why some people don't succeed in the business, if you sit around your hands all day, uh, guess what? You're not going to succeed. Mm-hmm. Simple as that. Mom, Mom, how much, or how does it make you feel to know that you've had such a big impact on, on Brian and, and myself and my sister, Shannon, who is very entrepreneurial mm-hmm. and in her own right has had business success in the past. Totally. So, mm-hmm. you know, and your, your work sons now, uh, Ben and Corey. So, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're constantly somebody who is obviously inspiring and your work has inspired us. Uh, Brian, obviously you're having an impact on the advisory community in our area, but I'll, I'll just touch base with you first, mom is how does that make you feel to know that you've had that impact? Oh, rich and blessed, I guess. I don't feel any, I, I don't feel like I'm special. I just feel like I'm trying to do the best I can. I had, um, I had a really very blessed life, I think, as a child growing up. I had a, a tremendous grandfather that left a huge impact on me. So I, um, I think I'm just trying to give back the best I can. Well, certainly amazing values. Yeah. I think I think part of it is uh, what Dreen alluded to earlier. It's genes. Uh, if if you knew Dreen's mother and and her father as well, they were workers. They were people who didn't know how to sit down. They were always busy. They were always working. Always and, working. Yeah, and so as a result. 
Um, that's something that got passed on to Dreen, and I think got passed on to her children as well, insofar as you don't just sit around on your hands. You know, there's job to, there's work to be done, there's things to do, and you do it. And uh, I think that got passed down, and that's, that's the, uh, the mindset. Well, it's from my perspective, you know, it's very clear that, you know, Doreen, you've become very much, you know, you're the voice of reason. You know, I've had my own trials and tribulations, and, and I have to say, you know, it's, uh, you do have a gift to be that voice of reason. And clearly, you've made it work between your husband and your son. Right. And, and you've been that so-called referee, the voice of reason. And, and, you know, you've done that for myself as well. And so you, you definitely have that gift. Thank you. hundred percent. I could not agree more. It's, uh, <laughs> it's reassuring sometimes. Like, sometimes she'll just like come to my office and be like, okay, this is what we're talking about. And just she'll like talk about it. I'm like, oh, I feel better now. This yeah. is great. This is wonderful. <laughs> well, I can breathe again. This is. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you do have an impact much larger than you think. Yeah. Work sons and all. It's huge. Thank and you. I, I, I equate you. a lot of our success um, to uh, just like Corey nailed it. You know, he really did. But a lot of that, I don't want to, we don't want to glance past that too fast. It's you've been a huge impact to us. No, mm-hmm. Dreen's always been the sounding board for us. We, we've always, when we came up with a new idea or we came up with uh, a, a concern about something, that was the person we would go to and we'd say, okay, what do you think? Because she had the ability to look at it from the client's perspective, a common sense perspective that maybe we didn't because we were charging ahead and we were all, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she would say, whoa, whoa, whoa slow down, boys. Let's, let's talk about this. And that was the voice of reason. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So we've got to have people listening right now that are thinking, Either they're thinking about starting a practice, a business, doesn't have to be in the financial services. It could just be simply a restaurant or a, a shop. Uh, but there'll be people thinking, I want to make this change. Or I want to start a family business. Um, what advice would both of you give them to say, hey, here's t- the top three things you should be focusing on? I think the big thing is to do your preparation. You know, I have an expression that I keep uh, in my closet that I look at all the time, and it says, uh, luck is preparation meeting the moment of opportunity. And it was uh, attributed to Einstein. But I think there's a lot of truth in that. If you do the preparation, then the goal or whatever you're trying to accomplish, be it starting a business or whatever, will probably fall into place, provided you have some of the basics set up, you know, and, and you have a, a decent uh, business plan and model of, of what you're going to do or sell or whatever. But I think, you know, it's the preparation ahead of time. When we were going to incorporate, Sean and I were going to incorporate uh, in 2007, there was, there was no real model for that within the industry. And so we had to make that model. And we did a tremendous amount of preparation before we f- uh, threw the switch in November to incorporate, to make sure that all those little things like, you know, the uh, courier service and the long distance and all that was set up ahead of time. So I think my advice would be prepare well if you want to succeed. What about you, Mom? I would say, um, I don't know if I can find three right off the top of my head. Or what one point? What would be the biggest point? Bravery. Be brave. Be courageous. Go with your convictions. Um, And then find someone, either your partner or best friend, um, to, to be the strength that you need to help you through this. Because you're going to need someone hold you accountable, to hold you accountable, uh, to be to share be, the journey, to be your rock. Like Brian's been my rock for the last 35 years. To be to be your strength when you're weak, or to, or when you start to second guess yourself, to pick you up, um, and just um, financial backing is another little 
at a defense. What about, what about the person who thinks tomorrow they're going to end that journey? They've done it, but they're starting to doubt themselves. Oh, no. Hang in there. We have, we have wanted to end our journey several times. And I actually, I have a file full of little notes <laughs> of Brian saying, hang in there. We're going to get through this. We'll be better next month. Tomorrow's I have, another day. I have yeah. so many sticky notes on, file, on my file. <laughs> I just looked at them last week, actually. I thought, oh, well, hang on, ladies, or will the kids see these one day? Will they understand? <laughs> when somebody was considering Sorry. coming in the business, I always told them, there's going to be days when you're going to feel like you wish you were digging ditches <laughs> rather than doing this job. And there will be. There'll be days, I don't care what business it is. It doesn't have to be the financial services industry. Any business, there'll be days when you'll say, oh, my goodness, I wish I was just doing something simple like digging a ditch. But there's going to be other days when you're going to say, this is wonderful. So you got to balance them off. And Dreen's right. There were days where we thought, whoa, maybe this isn't going to work. And we'd say, you know, tomorrow's another day. We borrowed. We we sold our souls pretty much yep. for many, many, many months, and we clawed our way to the top. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. So hang in there if there's any way possible, and then see if you want to throw in the towel. We really appreciate you taking the time to share your story and, you know, give everybody that, you know, behind the scenes perspective. And, and I think it really adds a ton of value and shows the passion and the character and the drive that it takes to be in business in general. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. that. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. To learn more about the topics we've spoken about, check out our blog page at explainthis.ca. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe, rate, and review us in your favorite podcast app. This is Sean Todd. And Corey Butler. Until next time.